Hello guys, welcome to part four of my build of Airfix's 124 scale Spitfire. In the first three parts, we've looked at the kit, we've looked at building the cockpit, and we've looked at building the ammunition bays in the wings. In this video, we're going to look at what is probably the biggest uh, sub-assembly of the kit, certainly in terms of the number of steps in the instructions, and that is the engine. The Merlin engine which powered the Spitfire Mark IX is very famous, of course, and this kit includes a very good replica of that. In terms of the instructions, this goes from step 115 all the way through to around step 194. So that's a lot of building with a lot of detail. Now partly that is because the first few steps of the instructions do cover how to build the engine in a minimalistic way if you just want to put the cowling um, top and sides on and have the engine covered. So you don't need to go through adding all that detail if you're not going to show it. So step 115 through to step 135 cover that minimalistic build of the engine there. If you're building the detail, you don't do those steps at all. It's not like you do those steps and then do some extra ones. You do a completely different sequence of steps. So it's probably worth crossing out all those steps from 115 to 135 if you are building the detailed version like I am because it's quite easy to come back into the instructions and sort of pick up in the wrong place um, and end up doing the sequence incorrectly. So for us, what are we doing? So from step 136, uh, we build up the basics of the engine block with a few details. We build up the cylinder heads. So step 149 there has us adding the reduction gear for the propeller. And I believe that the box that we add there in step 151 and 152 is the intercooler. Then attached to that and below that we start in step 154 by adding the turbocharger. As we move down that page we had various components for that. And then 159 we have the bottom which will be the uh, intake for the carburetor I believe. So we'll have a, an air intake that goes um, into the bottom of that. Then as we turn over the page we can see we are adding the magnetos there and the uh, distributor leads. Then we switch away from the engine for a moment and we look back at that uh, bulkhead which we looked at in the cockpit video. There are various additions to that bulkhead. Then we go back to the engine um, frame, our support. There's some pipe work that goes in here which I'll come back to later. It was a bit of a pain to fit. Quite a bit more pipe work and then we actually add the engine to that support. Things are not over there though, so we've still got a few leads and bits and pieces to add. We've got the oil tank down here. And then we've got some framework which goes in place underneath the um, cowling covers. Finally, we have a choice of intakes depending on which version of the Spitfire we are building. Okay, so let's get going. We'll start with building the engine block, of course. Although there are quite a few detail parts of this engine, the vast majority of it is painted the same color, black, and therefore we can build up quite a lot of it before we need to do any painting. The only thing we need to be a bit careful about is adding details like those um, distributor leads, for example, and then perhaps not being able to get paint underneath them later on. So here's our block and the reduction gear. Now the instructions here tell you to use the engine block as a jig to build up the support framework, which, yeah, I guess that could work, but to me it makes much more sense to use this bulkhead piece and to dry fit these framework pieces into the bulkhead where they're nice and secure and then we can glue those other pieces in there at our leisure. That seems a much more sensible approach to me than uh, using the engine to guide things. And of course we can put the engine in afterwards 
just to check everything is correct. Next up is part of the uh, supercharger. Then we have the cylinder heads. We have a nice Rolls-Royce logo on there. I'm not quite sure how I'll be able to paint that though because it's the detail is so small, I'm not sure it's going to even catch the brush, but we'll have a go. And at this point, we've got the um, two cylinder housings in here, glued in position. I think it's probably not wise to add anything here in this gap at the moment until we get the paint work on. But we can add here the um, supercharger at the back and the intake for the carburetor. But this block here, which is the intercooler, I'm going to leave off for now again because it's going to block paint access for other areas of the engine. A few small details get added. The pins on this piece were so small at first I thought they were a flash, but no, they are required to get this in the correct place. And all the time here I'm just dry fitting to make sure everything fits still. Here we've got the magnetos and these leads did need to be cleaned up quite a bit at the end. So they would fit in the holes. I didn't add these right now because they'll be a different colour to the black, overall black. Then it's time to build up lots of detail on this firewall which we previously painted. The majority of these parts will also be green so I kind of wasted my time uh, painting that firewall previously. But once all the parts were attached I painted everything NATO black and then gave it a top coat of the interior green. I brush painted Vallejo metal colour for the small number of aluminium parts. We have a choice here of intake depending on what version we're doing. So for versions A, D and E we have this slightly larger intake here. And for B and C, and B is the version I'm doing, we have this smaller version. At this point it's also worth noting there's quite a few fuselage parts here which are going to be seen from both the outside and the inside if we're viewing the engine. So we've got this lower cowling piece here and the side piece as well. Great lots of detail on those. And of course the top of the cowling. But all of them have ejector pin marks on the inside so they're all going to need to be filled and cleaned up. In terms of the propeller, we have the housing and a few detail parts. Though to be honest, all of these get covered by the nose cone here. The propeller blades have a nice keyed fit into the housing so they can only go at a certain angle. However, for some reason, maybe for different versions, I'm not sure, although I can't imagine what would be different, they are this two piece design. So we need to add a second piece here. And of course that's going to leave us with a seam line that needs filling. So here is our engine once it's been given a coat of black. I lightened this black slightly with a bit of NATO black. At some point I need to paint that Rolls Royce. I could then add some details. 
I could then add the separately painted details, but before I did, I just wanted to give a dry brush of a lighter grey colour. This was NATO black to try to pick out some of these details on the engine because it is a bit um, hard to see them when it's the single black colour. Once that is done, we need to get these pipes through the framework for the engine before we can add the engine to it. This is by far the most difficult step of the whole model. Um, the right hand side starboard pipe goes through fine because as you can see, it simply starts on the inside of the frame, pushes through the frame and ends up on the outside. And we have a single connection point up in the top right of your picture where that pipe connects to the framework. So we can just scrape the paint off those two connection points and glue them in, no problem. And of course, to make sure that everything does line up, we can uh, dry fit the engine and make sure the end of that pipe goes into that oil tank as well. I'm not quite sure why I didn't film it going in there, but I did put it in there to, uh, to keep it in the right place. On the other hand, the left-hand side pipe is something approaching the personification of evil. It has to start on the outside of the framework, pass through to the inside, and then somehow, I don't know how they expect you to do this, pass back out through the framework again. And as you can see, this pipe is not a particularly flexible thing, and this framework is not particularly flexible either. Um, I struggled with this. I tried twisting it, I tried bending the framework, bending the pipe a little bit. In the end, at one point, I ended up with this pipe stuck, so it wouldn't go backwards or forwards, it wouldn't rotate, it wouldn't go in, it wouldn't come out. And basically, all I achieved here was scraping a lot of the paint off the, uh, the framework, the green paint, and a lot of the brass paint off the pipe as well. I have no idea why they designed this like this, or how they didn't think this would be a problem during the test builds. Um, the problem is that vertical um, piece on the sort of top of your top center of your picture there, which really gets in the way. Why that couldn't be a separate piece that just glued on afterwards, I do not know. In the end, I did the same thing. I think Nigel from Nigel's Modeling Bench did this. I just cut through the top of that uh, vertical piece so that the pipe work could, um, could slide through and then I glued it in place afterwards. Really, really silly design. Um, yeah. And seemingly completely avoidable as well. Once we actually get those pipes through, it doesn't look too bad. The engine doesn't look too bad. There are still a few details we need to add. So we've got the um, more of the distributor cables, we've got the exhausts, we've got a few more pipes and bits and pieces like that. But really before I can do some of those I need to get the repainting done on this. I also need to do something more to highlight this because it does look a little bit, um, bit toy-like at the moment. Although the green framework here is a bit scratched up by accident, I can't help thinking a bit of dirt and a bit of chipping on that framework might be quite nice. So I'm probably going to repaint this green and then do a bit of um, aluminium chipping on it. But for now, I'm going to call that a day on this video. That's our engine mostly built up. In our next Spitfire video, we should see the mating of the fuselage with the wings, the engine with the fuselage and the wings as well, and hopefully the closing up of the wings. The wings have been caused me a bit of a problem. Those um, ejector pin marks that I didn't fill at the beginning have been causing me no end of problem and I must have uh, filled them, sanded them, primed them, painted them, not been happy, gone over again, uh, filled them, sanded them, primed them, painted them, not been happy um, four or five times now. My, um, my sanding skills are not great, my patience for that is not great and uh, combined with the small access area that you have into that has uh, been causing me a bit of a headache. But we will get there in the end, 
Um, I'm determined to make it look decent. So hopefully we'll start to see things coming together in the next video. Until then, thank you very much for watching. A big shout out to my YouTube members and Patreon supporters for all of their continued support through 2022. It's much appreciated, guys. And I wish all of you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Take care, guys.